running from my past And though I've got away at last I need a little rest beside the road I lay my sorrow down a while And fall upon the ground a while To stare up at a sky that's full of snow A little sleep would do me But the cold might cut right through me I know that it's a risk I have to run Fears and demons fill me More than once they nearly killed me But my story isn't over till it's done For two years I've been feeling suicidal and I was exhausted. I've been living in a world with no joy, no hope and my only thoughts have been about how to stop all this pain and end my life. I went on holiday on my own to Paris, hoping that the beauty of that city, combined with the contents of its museums and galleries, might somehow calm my troubled mind. But you know that Van Gogh painting? The one of his bedroom and there's a wicker chair and a bed and the perspectives at a sort of slant, that one. Well, there I was, looking at it in the Musée d'Orsay, and the objects in the picture started sort of coming out at me like it was 3D. And it was at that moment that I could clearly see that the painter had been mad. And amongst the bright and vivid colours, I could also see his pain. And then I started looking at some of the other paintings, the Van Goghs, and they all seemed to be coming away from the wall, calling for my attention. And I began to freak because it was like hallucinating. And it was then that I knew what all of this meant that I was maybe going where he had been. Over the next few weeks, things went from bad to worse until one day I went down to my GP's, asked for some sleeping tablets, and then I came back home and took the whole packet. I remember running out of water, there were so many pills to swallow, and having to fill up the glass again. And then I sat on my bed thinking, I finally had the courage to do it. Peace at long last. And that done, I laid me down to die. And I remember that bit being fantastic. I was so tired, so low, so empty of any sort of hope that things could ever get better. And it was such a relief to just stop struggling and to finally give up the fight. I could feel myself slipping into a seductive state of unconsciousness. When completely on the spur of the moment, I decided to call my therapist. I didn't think of it as a cry for help. I thought it was too late for that. I just wanted to explain to her what I'd done and why, and to say sorry that I didn't have the strength to keep battling on. Hi, I can't take your call at the moment, but leave a message and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Oh, hi, it's me. I just wanted to say goodbye and thank you for all your support. I'm so sorry, I'm really sorry. But the reason that I'm still here to tell you my story today is that she called me back a few hours later, got no reply because I was unconscious, and then she called the police who sent the fire brigade to break into my flat and rescue me. I vaguely remember being at a general hospital and then a couple of days later, I was transferred to a secure psychiatric ward. After a brief medical examination, I was shown into a double room and left there on one of the beds. I found out that the woman I was going to be sharing with was called Alison, and we've stayed in touch ever since. I've been in that hospital several times before. Once, when I was a patient on there, I had leave to go out for a walk and I tried to commit suicide by jumping off Westminster Bridge into the River Thames. I heard voices and the voices were saying, You're going to be butchered in bed if you don't jump into the Thames. I was very, very, very depressed at the time and I didn't mind the idea of dying, so I jumped into the river, but it's not very deep, so I didn't drown. The police picked me up, wrapped me in silver foil paper to keep me warm. 
and then they took me back to the ward. Is that why you were in hospital when I was there? No, after that first time I tried to commit suicide again because I was still very depressed. Tried to jump under a train. It was at King's Cross. It wasn't very busy. There weren't many people on the platform. So I went down to the end, right down to the end of the platform. But I fell under the railway lines, so they stopped the train, turned all the power off. They crawled underneath the train. It was quite some feet. And I crawled out between the carriages. And then the paramedic came through with a member of staff, see if I'd broken anything. And they put me on a stretcher, carried me up the escalator and took me to hospital. And they cut all my clothes off and tested me to see if I'd done anything to my back, which I hadn't. I was all intact, just a bruise on my leg. And then they took me over to Elliot Tillery Ward. When you jumped onto the track, was that because you heard voices? No, it wasn't voices, it was me that time. So what was different from the time you jumped off the bridge? I thought it would work. I was convinced it would work. I would just be mown down and that would be it, the end of me. But it wasn't. I fell in the gap. And how do you feel now about it being unsuccessful? Mm, well, I was disappointed at the time. But now... I'm quite pleased, quite pleased I survived. There was a small communal area near the nurse's office where you could sit around with other patients. Nothing much to do there, but if you got down or lonely in your room, it was just somewhere to watch the world go by. It was there that I first met Deb. Deb sang these incredible songs with amazing lyrics about the dangers of established religion or how grass is better for you than crack or about some homeless guy that she'd met who died young. I started writing songs when I was a kid, when I was lying in my bed. I love the written word, the, the spoken word, the sung word and songs are a, a great way to get across to people what you've got to say. I started writing about being a victim of society before I had my bipolar and then a lot of the songs I've written since. When I was 15, I told my parents I was gay and I got kicked out. Well, they said, just go, we don't want you living under this roof. But I didn't know where to go, so I stayed in the streets. I was on drugs, heroin, cocaine. It was a nice mix. And I was raped by these men. I gave up my body to get high. But I know what those men look like. I'm pretty sure I could pick them out even though it's been so many years. I can imagine how much they've aged. I remember the scent of their aftershave, their breath, their nails, their clothes, the sound of their voices. By the time they were through with me, I, I knew them pretty much by heart. But later I just sank down because because I had a family who refused to believe I was gay, refused to allow me to be gay, to hear that I was sexually assaulted by men repeatedly. I used to say, but you're gay, so why do you mind? They don't care it was a wrongdoing. It's like I don't have the right to say no, because I'm gay. I'm supposed to enjoy it. Before my last episode, I just stopped taking lithium because I thought I was going to have a baby and I didn't tell anyone I'd stop taking it. But like, ten days down the line, I'm just like, back into the darkness and my, my mental state of perception and understanding goes like to other places, like when you're really enthusiastic about things as a kid. But my, my brain is taking me enthusiastically down a road or path in my head, but I'm just lying there. I, I can't move. I'm off. Gone. Gaga. And sometimes like, I come home and I'm just like, shit on the floor, you know, and it's really horrible and embarrassing for the kids and it's like for 24 hours and you can't sleep and it's terrible because I'm just like rushing around all over the place and to be honest with you, I can't trust myself. So after the last episode, I called up the police. Yeah, 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 yeah. My name Debbie. I'm having a lithium come down 28 Crawley Way. Can you come and get me, please? Whoa! They didn't come for ages.
Nurses, did they? So I put on my coat, I got on the bus, I went down the hospital to check myself in. And while I'm down there, they come round to my house. Well, they just ripped open the back door. They just ripped it off, even though it was locked. They ripped up all the locks, went upstairs, got a torch, and shot it on all the kids' faces. They even got my name wrong. And then they went in all the kids' bedrooms, all three of them. Then David had to get up and deal with it. And then finally, 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 finally they left and the heat was off. And do you know what? It was like I was some RA bomber, you know? I've been back at home from the age of 18 till now, looking after my mother. She had a stroke paralysed on the right hand side. I've been a full time carer and it's driven me into the ground. Because cause you have no friends, just a vicious, strict family that's never there for you. I've got no self respect. Just pure hatred. It's, it's my fault that I'm gay. My fault that I was abused. My fault that I took drugs. My fault that I put myself in that position. That's what I believed. And then my mother had another stroke and I decided that if I starved myself it would be a way of dying so every time I ate I vomited. Seeing my mother like that, I thought I haven't got the energy to look after her. I really can't do it. My family all came to the hospital but as soon as mum was discharged no one came home to help. And that was it. I took an overdose of paracetamol and slipped my wrist and ended up in hospital. So according to my medical records, I'm now somebody who has had mental health problems. I wouldn't mind actually just saying I was ill. Isn't being ill the same as having a health problem? And when I finally left the ward, I certainly wasn't ready to live on my own again. But on that day, I was so delighted to be leaving that place where, especially towards the end, my stay there had felt like a prison sentence. For several months afterwards, I had nightmares about things that had happened there. But I finally recovered. Firstly, from my stay in the hospital, and then later on, from my breakdown. And now, well, it's all just become a story that I'm telling about something that happened three years ago about a time in my life when I sort of lost the plot. I went a bit doolally. I was away with the fairies, out to lunch, a little bit bonkers. But I'm okay now. I'm almost completely mended, nearly back to normal. I'm one of you again, one of us, not one of them. But can I just say, in my experience, there's a very, very thin divide. Long as the sun beats down, there's hope.